In English-speaking countries, due to the large Irish communities, most people are at least vaguely familiar with St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March, a time of leprechauns, the colour green, shamrocks, and pints of Guinness. But what is the origin of this day? Today we are going to introduce the incredible St. Patrick of Ireland. Patrick of Ireland is one of my absolute favourite saints. I absolutely love his story and the legends around him. He lived in the 5th century and he has been honoured and celebrated in Ireland and now around the world for over one and a half thousand years. St. Patrick's Day across the world unites Irish people and creates an amalgamation of customs and foods and folklore from the Emerald Isle. Patrick was not originally from Ireland. He was born in Wales to a Roman family. This was at the end of the Roman occupation of Great Britain. His people would have been a small minority within the Roman community because they were Christians. Patrick's father was an ordained deacon of the church. His grandfather was a priest of the church. But Patrick hadn't quite grasped the religion of his family and he didn't take it very seriously or with much care, something he writes regretfully about in his letters later on. He was a wayward young man that was captured at the age of 16 by Irish raiders and sold as a slave in Ireland. Patrick was tasked with tending sheep and there in the fields of Ireland, far from his home, from his family, afraid and alone, he rediscovered his Christian faith. He spent entire days and nights pouring out his heart to God, becoming better acquainted with Christ and building a friendship with someone who he had ignored in his earlier years. He prayed constantly, often waking up incredibly early in the morning just so that he would have more time in a day to talk to Christ. Patrick was a slave here for six years. Then one night in a dream, Patrick heard a voice tell him that he would soon return to his native land. Then he heard a voice that said, your ship is waiting. Now the ship in his dream was over 200 miles away in a coastal Irish town that Patrick had never seen. But when Patrick woke up, he left, he escaped and made his way to the coast. What followed was somewhat of an adventure as he made his way back eventually to his family in Wales. They were so overjoyed to see him, they promised that they would never let him go again. He was here to stay at home. But then Patrick had another dream. In this dream, a man came from across the sea bearing letters, more letters than Patrick could count. Patrick took one and he heard in this letter the voice of the people of Ireland. He recognized their voices and they begged him to return to them, to bring to them the light of Christ. While Patrick was not the first Christian missionary to Ireland and was not the first one to attempt to bring the gospel there, he is remembered as the enlightener of Ireland because it was his ministry that eventually ushered in a new age for the entire island. Ireland at the time was a place of kings and kingdoms, old gods, demons and druids. It was a very complex world that he was entering. He wasn't just dealing with pagan religion, he was dealing with serious politics and the interplay between these two things. The druids of Ireland held massive power over the people. There was a lot of fear of these old gods and Patrick had to conquer that fear. Amongst the stories and legends of St. Patrick's life is one involving an important fire. Now, on a particular night of the year, it was custom for the Druids in this one area to light a religious fire atop a sacred hill. On this night, it was completely forbidden for anyone within sight of this hill to light a fire of their own until that one had been lit. To light your own fire before that was punishable by death. The Druids gathered on this hill. They were building the fire and one of them noticed something. He points out to the others and they all look as on another hill, slightly higher than theirs, the top of a hill is ablaze with a bonfire far larger than theirs. Patrick had lit a fire to the glory of God in honor of Christ's resurrection. He in this motion wasn't just showing his lack of fear of their authority or of their religion or of their gods. He was almost daring them to try and kill him, and they couldn't. That fire was a powerful light, and that light would eventually spread everywhere. It went some way to impress local kings and to show people that there wasn't quite so much to fear from these old religions. Another story of St. Patrick that is very famous is one in which he expels all the snakes from Ireland. Now, some people will look at this story and have said that it is an allegorical one, that in expelling snakes what it's saying is that he expelled paganism 
from Ireland. And this might be true, and I have no problem with reading the story like that, but it is an interesting piece of trivia that Ireland is one of very few places in the world in which there are absolutely no snakes to this day. One of Patrick's most famous deeds is in the symbolism of the shamrock. Now, shamrock is an Irish word for a number of different plants that have one stem and three leaves. This is called in many other places clover, and Patrick used this plant as an illustration of the Holy Trinity. Three equal leaves, all in one, undivided and yet separate. Because of how well this lesson was received and how much Patrick and his lessons were loved, the shamrock, despite growing everywhere in Western Europe, remains to this day a symbol of Irish culture, Irish folklore, and the lands of Ireland. It is a place that has seen much pain and turmoil over the years, and yet its people still remember and still love the powerful example and the excellent stories of St. Patrick of Ireland. I'm going to give you a very short amount of time to try and guess what kind of tea I would possibly be drinking on a St. Patrick episode. To say that I have loved St. Patrick for almost all my life because his story is one of the most movie-like stories I've ever read. It's a story of courage, a story of willfully choosing adventure despite the odds and the difficulties and the challenges, and a story of overcoming it to great effect. So I was very excited to finally do this episode. And if you haven't guessed it, I don't know how you couldn't. It is, of course, Irish breakfast tea, so named because it was a blend of black teas first brought together in Ireland. Happy St. Patrick's Day!